I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Today I got something new to bring you in. I'm doing some testing here. I got a couple things I'm trying out for the first time today. Uh, we got the track set up here that we used at our last race. Slight modifications just to make it a little bit more stable when it gets windy and rainy and stormy out here. Anyway, what I had to test here is yet another Floss 3.0L. I absolutely love this frame. It's what I've been flying for the last month and a half. Can't recommend this thing enough. Now it's finally launched a power flip. You know, go check the thing out. Go grab it if you're interested. Uh, if you fly 20 by 20 stacks, this is my go-to frame. This is what I love for 20 by 20 stacks. And uh, I love my 20, 20, by 20 by 20 stacks. Uh, but there's one thing I haven't been really liking in my builds lately that's caused me some concerns. If you watch my vlog series where I was flying at the Mid-America Throwdown, you see that both days I started suffering from fail safes. So not like fall out of the air completely fail safes, but lock up micro fail safes. I can't control the quad and it's causing me to potential of losing in races and I can't have that. So I decided I'm going to try out the brand new Spectrum. Uh, what is it? The SRXL2 uh, protocol receivers. So therefore that's what I have here. You'll notice that in this particular build, there is no Immortal T antenna. We got the straight 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm going to fly that out here, see how it does. See how I like it versus using my Crossfire. Um, I moved to Crossfire because I wanted that better feel. I wanted that lower latency. This thing should have low latency too. Do I notice any difference? Uh, the other thing going on here is this is actually running 4.1, Betaflight 4.1. That's the first version of Betaflight that they officially added support for this particular receiver. Those are running 4.0 with RPM filtering. This is 4.1 with RPM filtering. We're gonna see if that makes a difference. I don't know. We're gonna see if the latency is a difference, if there's a difference in receiver's control link. Confidence that I have, but anyway, we're gonna get this out here, get its maiden on, and uh, see how she rips this track. Let's check it out. But no dollars, but no, we don't really give up. No, we don't really give up. Living for the ray of Life can be beautiful, life can be beautiful Going all the way tonight, making it beautiful Acting like there's no tomorrow Acting like there's no tomorrow Acting like there's no tomorrow Acting like this, acting like this All right guys, so I just put through about 10, 12 batteries there on the brand new 4.1 build. I did break a motor, which really, really sucks. Uh, so far, everything's working great. Great with the RX link. I feel no issue whatsoever. Um, the quad definitely feels different than I'm used to. I can't tell if it's because of the receiver, the 401. I assume it's the 401, uh, but so far, so good. So anyway, I'm gonna switch over to one of my Crossfire builds. Try that out here, see how we do. Uh, running mostly low 16s, high 15s, something like that on this track, but uh, yeah, let's try the Crossfire builds. But no dollars, but no, we don't really give up. No, we don't really give up. Living for the ray of light, light can be beautiful, light can be beautiful. Going all the way tonight, making it beautiful. Acting like there's no tomorrow, acting like there's no tomorrow. Acting like there's no tomorrow Acting like this Acting like this
All right, guys, the rest of the Drake crew showing up here out at practice while we're testing this out. I just ran through my crossfire rig. Um, unfortunately, I did have one instance of a fail safe, which I think was a fail safe, but I just lost control. Video went out completely. I have my VTX set to on fail safe kill itself, so I think that's what happened. Uh, one weird thing is this camera angle I like way better on this quad. It just it feels like what I'm used to. It is what I'm used to, even though they're the exact same fixed mount. So, you know, go figure whatever that is. I wish every fixed mount would be the same, but they're just not. I don't know why. Um, the other thing going on is I thought everything felt better, especially the little corkscrew at the start, but my times are not better. I'm getting low 16s just like the other one. I had some 15s with the other one. I'm not having this one. So what I'm going to do is maybe the batteries aren't performing quite as well. I'm going to go back over to the uh, the Spectrum Quad and see how it does and see if I still get those 15s. What's your debate here? I'm doing my first non-crossfire quad, Terry. Ooh, yeah, you're going to see a difference. What do you think? I think it's for sure gonna be slower. I mean, the Dude, quad reacts slower. Do you have to go over this math again? How fast uh, is Crossfire? Okay, but either way, how fast is Crossfire? Spectrum is faster than the old. No, no, no. Give me milliseconds. I don't. Nobody believes this bullshit I don't know anyway. Exactly. But well, I know the numbers everyone agrees to as well. Eleven, 11 and nine. <laughs> it's two milliseconds. Dude, you will not feel Same different. Alright guys, um, sorry I didn't bring any more updates back at the field, but uh, man that was such a great day of practice. I didn't want to waste any more time with that camera. Um, if you guys could watch some of that footage I just showed you there. Um, Beast Mode was on his A game. He was he was putting in good laps. In fact, I think his fastest lap ended up being 
0.003 seconds faster than my fastest lap. So I haven't actually had a battle with him where he's put in the same lap times I was in a long time. Um, not to start any drama, but I'd say since he switched to Flight 1 and he just switched back to Beta Flight. So good to see uh, Beastmo getting back on his A game. Hopefully we can have more practice sessions like that. Push each other, get ourselves going. So anyway, the sun goes down so dang early these days, we just wanted to get as much time as we could. So we're back here, we're back at home. It's actually a few days later, and I want to share my thoughts about doing the Crossfire versus the Spectrum comparison. So I talked about how I preferred the the flight of the camera angle that was in the Crossfire build. So that was definitely noted. I preferred that style. For some reason, certain maneuvers, I was just more used to the way they felt. But the way the quad flew was quite a bit different. So what I mean by that is just flying with the Spectrum 4.1 quad, remember 4.1 versus 4.0, I had a smoother response. Everything felt smoother, less jerky almost. Um, and I wasn't sure what that was, like maybe 4.1 changed, maybe 4.0. So what I decided to do is I actually upgraded my uh, Crossfire quads to 4.1 to run with the exact same uh, specs. Now, they're using the exact same equipment except for that Crossfire receiver. And surprisingly enough, it didn't give me that same feel. It actually flew worse than it did on 4.0 when using those Crossfire quads. So I don't know what that was. I don't know exactly why that happened. I don't know if it was the feel thing. Um, one of my quads was having fail-safe issues with Crossfire, so... Anyway, what I can say is, I went back to the field, I used that Spectrum quad, I had nothing but total confidence with it, um, and I started to reevaluate my usage of Crossfire all, in all honesty. So, um, Crossfire was something I switched to because Crossfire was said to have the lowest latency, the lowest control, it would feel the best. When I first tried it versus my Free Sky receivers, I could notice a little bit of difference, I really liked it, I changed everything to Crossfire, and I've been running it for, I don't even remember now, over a year. Um, then I started having crossfire fail saves at races. I'd had trouble, I had trouble at the National Open, had trouble at the Mid-America Throwdown, just things that just drive you insane. I want to start wondering, is it the, the micro TX crossfire I'm using? I went up buying a full size, which you can see right here, a full size transmitter. Still had issues there. Um, some people said maybe it's the radio, maybe it's this. I went up getting a really good deal on a Spectrum IX-12. I'm like, you know what, I'll try putting in that and see what happens. I still have issues there. Now, what ended up happening in that process is I fell in love with the Spectrum IX-12. I didn't like it for the first day. It felt really different. The gimbals were really different. But very soon I realized just the level of build quality in this thing versus the Spectrum, the way it feels in the hands, the comfort level while flying is completely unmatched. And I really don't like going back to my Tyrannus anymore. This thing has been absolutely fantastic. So that's why I tried out these new Spectrum receivers, supposed to be the new uh, cast pajamas, and I gotta tell you, they felt fantastic. I had complete and total confidence in my control link while flying on a race course, which is what I'm looking to do doing. I'm flying on a racetrack, it's not far distance, it's not long range, yet I'm getting fail safes and crossfire, and like I said, I can't have that, I can't lose a race due to problems like that. So, I started thinking about it. These individual receivers, I think they're $26 for Spectrum when I'm buying my Crossfire receivers. They're $35 to get with the Mortal T antenna. That costs extra money. In order to run Crossfire, I had to buy this transmitter. That cost extra money. Um, in order to lug this thing around, I need to add on this whole separate thing to my radio. That costs extra money. In order to run this thing, the battery needs to power both this and the radio. That takes extra battery life. It's draining the hell out of my battery. It's additional bulk and build, like there's just a lot of cons that come with Crossfire, which I've always known, but I wanted that additional uh, performance. Now I'm not seeing that performance, so I finally decided I am done with Crossfire for racing. It just doesn't make sense to me. I had total confidence in my Spectrum control. I love the way this uh, transmitter works. Uh, I love the way Smart Audio integrates with uh, Crossfire. I can go into the menu here, my little back, and click it around and change the channel, but you know what? It's built right into Spectrum as well. I can go and change it there. I don't even need the video transmitter to be on at the time I set it. So overall, I'm just really, really happy with the setup with one Spectrum receiver. So what I've decided to do, I'm going Spectrum. I never thought this would have been the case. I always thought I'd be a Tyrannus guy. I then always thought I'd always be a Crossfire guy, but I'm sorry. Crossfire just doesn't make sense for racing anymore. So to Spectrum, it is for me. Um, so anyway, I kept saying the name of these things, the SPM4650, the packaging of these things, the new protocol, the SRXL V2. I can't keep that nonsense straight. I have a hard time remembering that wording. The packaging of these things is absolutely obnoxious. The wires are god-awful, but you know what? It performs, 
It feels great. It saves me a few dollars. I'm changing my entire fleet out to these bad boys. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Those are the tests I did. That's what I learned. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. Are you Crossfire users? Are you getting tired of Crossfire? Do you have no nothing but issues? Does it work great? Do you like Spectrum? Whatever. Let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace!